Market, the show where we spill the beans on what is really happening in the Perth property market. Welcome back, episode 15, Shane and Roscoe. How are you feeling today, gents? I'm top of the world. Peaking, mate. Peaking, Peaking. I know. You've taken 25 calls since you arrived. Open forum office. Yeah, the yeah. The yeah. Loudest. Very, very exposed here. We're feels in our like, spiritual home. Feels, like Apple. feels like Apple when you're Apple, yeah, this is, this is the Google. The Apple store. The being. Google of W, yeah, yeah, with yeah. no freebies. The Google of real estate. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, we're at the crib office today, guys. So it is our, our home and we're very happy to be here. Although... I think the staff are a little bit annoyed because I reckon normally when we're filming, they're cracking beers yeah. and they have to keep working today. It's so. very quiet because it wasn't five minutes ago. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's very quiet. Okay. Um, now, in other news, big weekend for the agents of, of Perth. Rewa Awards were on. Yeah. Uh, we need to say congratulations to a couple of people. Linton Allen from Empire Property mm. Solutions, Janet Abbott from Willow Tree Realty, Scott Swingler from Space Realty, Eric Cartanto from Harcourt's Applecross. Max Pro Real Estate, One Residential, Top Realty, Duet Property Group, Real Mark Coastal, and the agency. They all took home the big awards on the weekends. Beautiful. So well very, done. very well, well done. done. Well done Your me. team, Shane, um, killed it. Number yes. two um, for you. Well, there's no team, unfortunately. Hence why the bags are on One resi, one but resi. <laughs> our office, we took Your it office, out. Sorry. We won. Yeah. So very happy killed with that. It, yeah. um, I think a good thing was to see, uh, I guess, a good turnout for staff, again, the real estate agents that win the awards, they tend to go a lot of these sort of things, but you actually see some staff there enjoy a night, well, night I sound the Terps or a night out, yeah. I don't know if you're allowed to say. Was it a big team, one? Because I know you had to kind of wait, um, obviously it was delayed because of COVID. So mm. was well, it I think there was restricted the numbers, yeah. uh, which is a bit unfortunate, but again, a lot of the companies now, the bigger ones, you've seen their own award nights rolling out. I think um, Realmark had theirs, Ray White had theirs recently. Yeah. Um, so I guess next year, fingers crossed, It'll be bigger and better. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Did, Damien Collins did a fantastic job yeah. on the night. And did Tim Gossage fresh from retiring? Yeah. From uh, his Channel new 10. Life. He's so he's a bit of Goss lately John now. Farnham returned to her. Yeah, he's back. <laughs> yeah. he's um, back. Goss is back. <laughs> yeah. um, all right, guys, we have a, a lot to get through today. We've got a big mm. show. So we're very quickly going to uh, discuss our in the industry topic. Which we have, to, we can't ignore, which yeah. is vacancy rates, yep. um, and the announcement by the state government that they are going to extend the emergency period tenancy legislation for all mm. residential properties, yeah. which obviously is probably going to put a little bit more pressure on those vacancy rates. Yeah, yep. to say the least. To say the very <laughs> least, Damien Collins, who we just mentioned, mm. and the friend of the show said it appears that the government has used the pandemic mm. as an opportunity to introduce rent control and meddle in the free market. Comments. Uh, look, I've been a fan of Mark McGill and most of the things he's done, mm. um, to take the politics out of it, just policy, uh, but this one here makes no sense. Mm -hmm. I think if you speak to most agencies across Perth, um, people, because of the stimulus in place by the federal government, have been pretty good with keeping up to date with their rent. So to introduce this, um, I think it's scary for commercial landlords. Like, yeah. So just take a moment to think the economy is booming in many of these circumstances and industries and they've got 50% rent holds till March next year, which yeah. is madness. Um, and as far as the residential, we've got people that, with the market being pretty healthy, um, finally getting the, the returns they should be getting, mm. and they're hamstrung until potentially March. Yeah. You can't sell a property because you don't want to risk being penalty yeah. interest by selling it exactly. with a tenant in place. And then second of all, holding rents back until March next year when we've got obviously this, this demand. Yeah. It's just, mm. you are it's exactly right. You are controlling the market. Mm -hmm. mm. But when the floodgates open, there's going to be a lot of pain and we'll be thinking back to these conversations they're yeah. having now going, maybe if it was trickled, trickle effect, but it's going to be like a big wave, I think. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think they've used a, a one a one cap fits all mentality, which I don't think we should have mm -hmm. because, you know, there's Australia's got all these moving parts and mm. all these different economies going on at the moment due to COVID. And we, as we know, the Western Australian, the, the vacancy rates through, I think the official one's 1 1.3 now. Mm. But I actually believe 2007 it's not, levels. I actually believe that it's yeah. lower than that. Mm -hmm. um, and you had many, many businesses, Jess, that had already um, got rent increases mm. through. And for the first time in about five years, um, investors were starting to get a pay rise, if, yeah. if you like, like that. All that now has to be reversed. Mm -hmm. um, and then you've got this, this, perfect storm you go well where's the sense in this mm. because it's not needed sure if there's yeah. a, if there was a, a real issue back in the in the thrust of covid you get it but right now we were out of that and there was some momentum there the market's got the momentum has. Yeah. it's like just throwing a, a whole heap of brakes on them when we didn't need to very so, quick question in terms of the investors mm. yeah. um obviously there's a lot of new apartment stock and that kind of thing coming yeah. on is yeah. that going to affect them buying that type of property well the investors i mean 
we're not seeing that many investors come to market until this basically this was removed. Yeah. yeah. So this has pretty much prolonged that again yeah. for yeah. another six months. Yeah. yeah. Um, my concern is for the investors that have finally seen that window of opportunity to get out, um, and they've been the, the headspace for so many people losing 20, 30 percent of their value of a property. Yeah. finally have a new opportunity to get out and the government's yeah. policy is restricting them from selling a property, yeah. mm -hmm. it's pretty concerning. Yeah. Yeah. It, it yeah. really is. Um, yeah. The negative equity, uh, we've spoken about this obviously with Mark um, and Lindsay, we're finally back to a point where some people are seeing that opportunity mm -hmm. and for have that extended again, um, I really worry for many people. Yeah, no, um, it's... it's and, and the fact is, it just came out of the blue as well. Because mm -hmm. yeah, everybody was gearing it's almost, up. It's almost, I was like, that can't be right. No, because everybody was gearing up. The, the emergency period mm. as such yeah. had, had ended and everybody was right. Yeah. We can rent increases, we can do this, we can do that. I mean, and probably the big thing too that Shane mentioned is that a lot of investors had held on to properties mm. the last few years for the, for the, for the hope that one day that mm. there, there was equilibrium for what they mm. paid. Mm. That, was, that was basically yeah. getting there. And all of a sudden, it's like, bang, okay. taken away from them again. There we go. Yeah, very, very interesting. Um, it'd be interesting to see what what the next few months hold them, yeah. won't it? Mm. Um, all right, we're on to our next segment. This one is a little bit different today, a little bit of an extension of in the industry, but we do want to welcome on a very special guest. Um, anyone who's been watching the show knows that we've been talking a little bit lately about Keystart and about affordable housing. So we wanted to get on an expert to answer some of the questions that we have been wondering. Mm -hmm. Please welcome onto the show, Lindsay O'Sullivan, the Chief Operating Officer of Keystart. Um, guys, hello, hello. <laughs> very, very kindly offered some of his time today <coughs> to, uh, to answer some of our, our burning questions. Um, to kick things off for us, obviously, we know a little bit about Keystart, but if you can just give us a very brief rundown of the program and, and who is eligible. Yep, sure. So Keystart's been around for 30 years, um, an initiative of the state government of the day, the time. They recognised there was a gap in the market where there's people who are sitting in the, particularly the, the private rental market, who could afford uh, to pay a mortgage, but were really dealt out of the market because their ability to be able to save a deposit. Mm. Mm -hmm. And that's become increasingly more difficult yeah. over the last three decades. And the requirements of the banks, major banks, has been you know, shifting more towards higher deposits. And the cost of lenders, lenders and mortgage insurance has also gone up quite a lot. So if you don't have a 20% deposit, you're going to need to um, trump up some, um, some lenders mortgage mm. insurance. And that could cost ten, fifteen thousand dollars mm. for a typical mm. buyer. So what Keystart does is it solves that problem with a really simple solution, which is a low deposit. So mm. we do 2% deposit um, for the metro area and no lenders mortgage insurance. So people could typically get in really easily um, with, uh, you know, as long as they've got a, a good credit history, they've got good stable incomes, um, being able to get into the market really quickly. Beautiful. Tell me, um, we've talked a little bit about the stock that's Keystart owned versus, yeah. uh, wh what are the, the properties that people can So purchase? just to clarify, so Keystart doesn't own any properties. Okay. We, we, we're the lender in the market. So about, at the moment, about 90% of everything we do is is a home loan like, like, home loan like any other. So yeah. it's a 2% low deposit um, home loan for people buying you know, in the open market. We, um, we support the Department of Communities um, through um, their shared ownership program. And we do that by providing the finance. And then we act as an agent for, yeah. the, for the housing authority through that process. Um, and so um, that, that scheme is for people who are on slightly lower incomes can still afford to pay a mortgage, but their borrowing capacity is obviously a lot lower. So the Housing Authority acts as a silent partner, if you like. Um, and so it's their properties that they've developed um, through the Department of Communities um, program. Um, and they would normally provide, a, you know, up to 30% of the, of the um, equity of that home they provide. And the, and the owner of the property has 70% and we're, we're the lender behind that 70%. Okay. It's one of those, um, mm. you brought up a good point when you're talking about that gap in the market. Yep. One thing before we get into the tough questions about Keystart, <laughs> one good thing that I think Keystart has done is we had situations, and I think again, Mark, the areas we do a lot of work in, we had people earning too much for a bank, but not a big enough deposit. Sorry, too much for Keystart, not a big enough deposit yep. for a normal bank. By lifting that threshold, um, yep. so last year, I think it did four sales for Keystart for the year. This financial year, I've done, I think, 12. Yeah. So it's certainly brought a lot of people that couldn't get in there and yep. they're just stuck. And with this rental crisis happening, they're gonna end up paying potentially 100, 150 bucks more 
in rent than what they would be yeah. in a mortgage. So I think it's really good that they did look at that. Yeah, we've had a, you know really good support from government allowing us to to um, move the mm. criteria. So the income limits at the moment is for a family is one hundred fifty five thousand mm. dollars in family income. Mm -hmm. Couples mm -hmm. is one thirty and a single is one hundred five, mm. um, and that's gone up by sort of ten or fifteen thousand mm. dollars, and that's opened up about another fifteen percent. Yep. Um, of you know of, of people being eligible for well we've seen a fifteen percent mm. increase in, in applications in from applications. that cohort mm. yeah okay yeah. Now, over what period of time this is the question I was going to ask have you yeah. seen through the last period sort of a, a more of a, what's the spike of the demand of, of yeah the well the, with the the additional grants we've seen um, over the last couple of months we've seen our volumes double mm -hmm. so yeah. um, from from May June to yeah. through to July mm. August the, yeah. the application volumes have doubled. And with wow. the demographic market that sort of yep. taps into, have you seen a shift in that? Or is it that Look, as stable? a general rule, over 30 years, yeah. what we find is typically keyed up customers are younger, so in their 20s and 30s. Yeah. Typically, their first home buyers, typically they build. Mm -hmm. And the reasons for that is, um, if you look at the incomes, um, typically younger people are on, on lower incomes as they build their careers and you know their yeah. incomes start to rise. And typically people, will, their first the first time they look at the market is when there's a life change. So yeah. I've moved out of home, I've got my job, I've, um, I've got a relationship, we've got a kid, um, I've moved location. So they're the triggers and they're typically with the younger people. Yeah. And then the other reason why they build is because of the grants act as a real incentive for people to take that step to build rather than to buy that 10 grand or at the moment it's a lot higher than up to 55,000 yeah. is a big incentive. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. With, um, I guess, when you mentioned there about the most of them building, yep. um, do you think a lot of the people that I guess when they're ringing the builders to say, look, I've heard you've got a low deposit scheme in order to buy. Um, do you think that's to do, I guess that's the reason why you're getting a lot of those key starts? Because still we're seeing in the market quite often, I, I meet people or I meet a tenant and they're like, I'd love to buy it, but I don't have big enough deposit. Yep. And I'm saying to them, oh, have you heard of Key Start? Obviously, I'm not a mortgage broker, but have yeah. you heard of it? And I'd say more often than not, they say, no, I didn't yeah, know it's, that. It's a really good point. So typically, we, we did a bit of research um, a couple of years ago, because we've we, we, over the last couple of years we rebranded, we built a new website, mm -hmm. we've phys physically relocated our offices. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Pretty proud of that one. Yeah, um, <laughs> and and what we found through that is what was really interesting is the the last step of the process for most buyers is thinking about the finance. Mm. Um, and we would encourage people to think about that first. Work out what yeah. your buying Everyone capacity would, but is. No one does. Yep. Yeah. And so yeah. what they typically do is they ask their mates yeah. and friends. They might ask parents mm. if they're younger, but yeah. they typically don't. Mm. And then they'll look, they'll go online or they'll go to Display Villages, they'll see the ads and they get triggered and they'll go to the builder. Mm -hmm. The builder then um, works with them uh, with the option of, of, um, of obviously building. Yeah. They're referred to a, a broker. The broker looks at the customer and says, look, Key Start's the right product mm. for you. It's not always the right product for every mm. customer. Yeah. Um, and then they go through the Key Start process. So we're often last in the process. Mm. What we would like to see is people thinking a little bit earlier mm. about what their options are because mm. building isn't always the right option. Sometimes a better option is to buy an established mm. suburb where you're closer to work or closer mm. to transport. Um, Keystart's not always the right solution for you either. If you've got mm. the ability to save for a deposit, mm. have the patience, save a little bit longer, mm. you might get a, a you know, different mm. option that's more suited to you. Um, but a good place to start is the website. The website yeah. gives you some options to go and check your eligibility and, and you know, how, how much, uh, you know, what your borrowing capacity is. So what are you guys doing in the market? Because that is one of the things we talk about all the time is the yeah. promotion of, of the program. Yeah. What are you kind of doing in the market aside from... Yeah, it's good. So the, the first step was getting our digital presence right. So mm -hmm. the website has been a big part of that. We've um, invested a bit more heavily in our social channels, so Facebook mm -hmm. and Instagram and, and LinkedIn, just mm -hmm. to um, talk a bit, little bit more what we're doing from an economic development point of view. Um, we have had a campaign in the market recently, some, some digital advertising and some radio, just to try and reinforce that message around what we're there to do. There's a lot of misconceptions around what Keystart does, like we own property or, yeah, yeah. you know, we build houses, you know, you, you name it, we've probably been accused of it. Um, but really the, the thing we've, we focus on is just that low deposit home loan. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're trying to get the message out. You know, one area we've been a little bit lighter on is is the real estate market because most of our customers build. Mm -hmm. And so um, the, we don't have the as high a profile mm -hmm. with the agents. That's something we would like. You know, we're members of REWA yeah. and yeah. we're, you know, you a good sponsor, a sponsor of, events, of REWA yeah. to try and get that brand out there. But I think within that market, there's a lot been a lot of turnover in, mm -hmm. in the real estate market in the last 10 years. So people may not, the, the agents themselves may not know enough about us. Yeah. Yeah. If you're not sure, if you're an agent, yeah. then pick, you know, pick up the phone and give us a call or go online and check us out. Mm -hmm. yeah. With the um, big question, I think reps will really want to know this at the moment. 
Do you have any idea on turnaround times? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, that is <laughs> something that... Yeah, yeah. So and I must admit, earlier in the year, Keystar, they were flying through. Because you actually yeah. see if they're eligible, yeah. you screen them probably a bit tougher than I reckon some brokers do. Yeah. Um, and they're going through quicker than banks. Yeah. But I'm sure that's not the case right now. Well, at the moment, our turnaround times are definitely blown out. Yeah. Um, and that's the case across the whole, whole market. Mm-hmm. So ours haven't blown out any more than anyone yeah. else's. Yeah. Um, but... Uh, to address that, with there's a few things we've done over the last mm. few months. We've d- done some further investments in technology, which has sped up part of the process, particularly the back end, so mm-hmm. the signing up process. Mm-hmm. Um, rather than we used to have paper based, it's all gone yep. to DocuSign now. Mm-hmm. Um, and we've just recruited some more people to um, in, in that lending process to try and speed mm-hmm. that up. Um, but the to get a pre approval, it's around about that 15 to 20 days mark yep. at the moment. Um, and that's gone from about three or five is where we were, or yep. you know, five to 10 where we were a, mm-hmm. a few months back. Um, we think that has now peaked yep. um, based on the volumes we're seeing. So they've mm. started to ease. Um, and with the, some of the changes we've made and the additional people we've got mm. on, we hopefully that'll start to pull back a little yep. bit, a bit mm-hmm. more now. And I think it's quite easy for especially builders to blame Keystart for taking time. But quite often if, yeah. if you've got that volume and they're not being submitted all the appropriate documents, yeah. it seems to be, oh, you need that, then that. Yeah. Well, it obviously blows out. The so, way. look, we've got really strict criteria. Yeah. Um, and the reason we, we, we do is, you know, we like to think of ourselves as the, the poster child of responsible lending. Yeah. You know, we, um, it, it aids no one if we, if we mm. just lend money. Mm. You know, we, we're, not, we're not profit driven. Mm. We're not, our, our um, people on our teams aren't driven by volumes mm. or anything like that. So um, we require a little bit more information to, you know, and do that fine, you mm-hmm. know, get that fine tooth and comb it through someone's yeah. financial history <laughs> yeah. to really understand, can they genuinely afford this mm. loan, not just now, mm. but in periods yeah. where rates are going to go up, because mm. they will at some yeah. point, or if they have periods of hardship. Because yeah. mm-hmm. things ha- happen in people's lives that they don't plan for, mm. like a loss of a job, mm. relationship breakdown, mm. um, illness, or whatever it might yeah. be, and, and they need to be able to absorb that mm. for a period of time. Yeah. I suppose pull the thread there for one second, which yeah. I think it's a really, um, Everybody talks about interest rates. Yep. You know, they are where they are at the moment. Yep. Um, from a modelling point of view, something I'm certainly interested in, I think a lot of people would be, when you do some modelling on, a, on, a, on an application, what sort, of nut, what sort of interest rates do you plug into that in, in the next, probably like three, four, five mm. year window or something? What, what are you guys thinking? What are you yeah, doing? so um, we look at the, obviously the, the current rate of the day, but then there's um, uh, a margin on top of that. And yeah. it, you're kind of looking at about that, six or seven percent mark yeah, so you go, um, it like goes that. up and down based yeah. on you know based on what rates are doing in the day and based yeah. on what re- the regulators guidance is yeah, yeah. we're regulated by asic where the bank's regulated by apra yeah. apra have some pretty strict rules yeah. around that now they've loosened those a little bit last year yeah. and we generally tend to follow what apra is doing um yeah. you know in the way that we, we assess it so we'll always assess someone's affordability based on a high rate yeah. plus there's also um additional buffers in there yeah. that we factor in because yeah. um you know, people aren't necessarily clear how much they're spending. Yeah. You know, that's, we can guarantee if the, what someone says they're spending, their mm. expenses, their declared expenses are always lower than what they really are. Mm. Um, and we've, we're trialling some new technology to try yeah. to help customers be more aware of that before they've gone through the full I'll process. I'll give you my wife's number, mate. If you can give her a call after that, it'd be good. Well, <laughs> maybe you could assess mine too. Yeah. I have the same problem. <laughs> if you, um, an interesting thing there, I think the market has caught out a lot of these buyers where they had the right intentions to get into the market, potentially avoid LMI, yep. mortgage insurance, but because the market pulled back, they just yeah, couldn't yeah. get it in front. Yeah. So I'm hoping the people that do do the right thing, make the next step, buy a property. Um, I'm not saying it's a real estate agent, but I think time yeah. will tell that you're going to get be better off at the end of your career. If they can actually get in and then maybe be disciplined enough to change to a, a normal bank, yep. they can come out in front. Yeah, because of that gap. Well, that you know, we've insurance. been around thirty years. When mm. the the average, um, you know, and we're a transitional lender. Think mm. of us as an incubator for the banks. Yeah. So yeah. we get people in who probably wouldn't the banks wouldn't even look at. Yeah. yeah. We can show these people can afford a loan. They can mm. service it really well. That you know they, they manage their money well. They they build a they build some equity and they move on. And that's yeah. what we want to see because we can then recycle time, what that debt. Time do you find that? So that goes in. Over the last 30 years, it's been about five years. Okay, now, right. in the last few years, that's that's gone out a yeah, lot longer yeah. because the prices have come right back. Yeah. And depend also depends on when you bought. Mm. If you, you know, if you bought at the peak around that, you know, 2012 to 14 mm. period, you get the reality is that most people mm. with any lender, they're, they're, going be, they're, 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 yeah. they're going to be in yeah. period of negative equity. Yeah, yeah. Now, the good thing is most of our customers have a long term view mm. with their property, um, and they're able to weather that because mm. for most people. You know their stable incomes and mm. employment and etc. 
Um, but there are some people who where that becomes more difficult and we've got a hardship program where we the customers to try and you know get them over that period of time if they get into that, cool. that point. I think it's a great product and as I say, the more we can get Keystart aware to people because yeah. the people that have brought through Keystart right now, I think in three months time are going to be grateful they did because the rents are going to well, maybe up. six yeah. months because of this. Yeah. It's a good, it's a good time to buy. <laughs> On that yeah, note, we will have to wrap up because we do have a lot to fit in. Yeah. But Lindsay, if people want any more information, can you tell us the website? So it's keystart.com.au. Really Beautiful. simple. So yeah. if you do want more information, head to the website because it is definitely a great program. Yeah. I'm an old person because I haven't heard any of the ads, but then I list the 882. Which has been given that is the that demographics. Sorry? Well, mate, there's no peace down What's this AM but, thing? Yeah, I know. Shane right. keeps it on air by Paul. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like Bob Bormel. <laughs> he always gets straight through the talk back. Yeah, I know. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Keep up the good Well, work. thanks for the opportunity, guys. Thank you, thank yeah, you so cheers. much for your time today. Yeah, pleasure. Right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, back to our regularly scheduled programming. On to one of our favourite segments, I think, of the show. Yeah. Um, next up, we've got our hood highlight. And we're welcoming on. A very special guest, someone who's not afraid of putting himself out there on video. If you've seen any of his videos on Facebook, you will know what I'm talking about. He was just named number seven in the assisted salesperson category at the RERA Awards on uh, on Saturday night. Very Please nice. welcome to the show, Mark Grogan from Thank Onion you. Real Estate. Number seven with the number one assistant, I have to say. Yes. <laughs> hey, who's the assistant? <laughs> who's the assistant? Oh, well, there's uh, Kelvin Beckingham, yep. tremendous assistant, uh, should be number one. And there's also my wife as well, who is a whole other category. Well Rewa. played. Rewa needs to have that category named, I think. Yeah. Well Just played. look out, because Shane, <laughs> I can see Shane's, Shane's looking for an Wives assistant. of real estate agents yeah. are very special people, but very patient people. They are. Mm. They and are. you can't poach them, so that's lucky. Well, you yeah. can. Anyway. <laughs> well, <laughs> that before. This isn't really the listing. People poaching yeah. wives is actually a big part yeah. of how we make our money. Yeah. You know, yeah. that, right? That's where the <laughs> listings come from. The, the poaching wives yeah. of real estate. Yeah. Yeah. I've got so many things I could say, but I'm... No, come on, no, just no, keep no. us in no. check, mate. Let's go. All right. The Shane Beaumont of Kelmscott is what we like to no. call you, Mark Grogan. <laughs> It's not that. Wow, that's, um, that's that is such a compliment. Is it an insult or a compliment? <laughs> no, it's a compliment. No. Absolutely. I uh, I have to say, I mean, around home, I don't wear socks, but no, it's. Uh, <laughs> it. Love it. I love it. You it are is, born and. It is bred. cold in. It is a bit colder in Kelmscott, but yeah, yeah. it is a bit colder. <laughs> and then there, off the Darling Star. Yeah, down the hollow there. Yes. Right. Get that easterly whipping around your feet. Yeah, <laughs> uh, for sure. <laughs> born and bred in Kelmscott, number one Asian out there. Tell yes, me. indeed. How is the, uh, how's the market out there at the moment? It's been amazing. I've uh, 14 years in that office, um, and well, 14 years in the industry, and I've never seen anything like what we're seeing at the moment. It's just phenomenal. Yeah, people everywhere. Beautiful. In terms of um, values, like uh, sales prices, people showing up at home opens, how's mm. it kind of looking across the board? Sales prices are, are surprising us again, which is, um, which is great. We're getting some really uh, excellent results there. Mm. Um, and I don't do home opens, I do most by appointment. Uh, and it's been phenomenal numbers of bookings for each of those. So um, last week, or a couple of weeks ago now, actually I had three that I listed on Friday night, had 108 inquiries for private inspections come in over three days. Um, wow. Were they done in multiple groups? Yeah, so I block out a window yeah. and I will have people come through uh, preferably one on one, yeah. maybe two at a time if there's yeah. a bit of a crossover there, but multiple uh, multiple people throughout the course of that window, and uh, and I might be there for three hours. It's a lot more work to do it that mm. way, but at least you're having a meaningful yeah. conversation. We've spoken about it during the COVID mm. situation where we had to. Yeah. Um, we had great months, but the the ratio from appointment to offer was like one in three because. Mm. You've qualified them, driven past the home, you've had that yeah. good, and you are to your owner to actually know who's coming through their home. Absolutely. Um, forget the COVID side of it, but I think it was actually much better too. Mm. Mm. It just, I, it can just be a different experience. I, mm. I think there's a place for home opens. Mm. Um, certainly wouldn't say that they, they should never be done, but uh, there are times, especially when it's like this, where mm. you're, you're really needing to explain to buyers that mm. there will be multiple people interested, mm. there will be multiple offers, and you can get an understanding of what their numbers, uh, what mm. they're actually looking at and what they're like. Um, mm. in terms of the, uh, the offers they're competing against. I think the days of, uh, I think you'd probably agree, I hope you agree, uh, the days of just we'll putting see. it online, mm. pumping them through the home open, in certain areas maybe to meet more vendors, but I just don't think you can really get the best result when that's a one-trick pony. It's not the silver bullet. No, um, no definitely not. Especially in those areas where you say you've got such a mixed bag of properties. Yeah, you know? yeah no, I, I like that best both experience mm. almost. Like, because one of the core things 
that I think this industry um, hasn't done particularly well through that you know, op home open sort of experience is having meaningful conversations with people mm. and having the ability, I think, to demonstrate the home. Mm, correct. And I think yeah. that's one of the things that I've always sort of longed for, really, is mm. um, when you go through a property, it's a bit like the car industry you've got now, mm. when you go to look at a the car, they demonstrate yeah. the car. Mm, true. They turn this on, open this and whatever. And yeah. I think, mm. given what you're doing, you, it, you can demonstrate the home, you can open cupboards, say how this works and that. And, and mm. I think that whole experience mm. is, is, is fantastic. You can't take a home for a test live. Um, yeah. But it's kind of the closest thing you can get to it. Yeah, yeah. We, we have been known to jump on beds and, just like, <laughs> and in baths and things like that. We, we do we, test them, don't we, Jesse? One well, of the not together. But, you know, so. One of the really interesting. <laughs> you, what? You brought into beds plus or something. Um, one of the interesting things about uh, Mark's area is that you've obviously got, um, you know, the scene in Lion King. When he's like, don't go over there. <laughs> Do you feel that sometimes you've got, obviously, the Clifton Hills, which the is dark, premium. The dark, black shadowy place. Yeah, and then you've got yeah. the left. But when you're working in an area like Wait, that. Wait, what are you calling the dark, shadowy area? I'm saying, just like, if you live on that top of mm. the hill, you, know, you don't live in Gulf Scott. Saying, right. You, don't, you live don't in Clifton go, Hills. Don't go over that area. Right. So it's right, quite right. different when you say, oh, you've got that beautiful up in the hills of Kelton. No, it's, it's just Clifton Hills. Mm. So I think it's really interesting when you're dealing with properties that potentially a million dollars mm. down to sub 200. Yes. Um, you're obviously going to have to look at different marketing methods, different methods to show properties. Yeah. Um, how, how you deal with that with owners? Because I guess they're all Kelm's got properties. Correct. Um, it really, every single one is an individual process, I mm. suppose. So, I mean, I wouldn't say that I would never, you know, that I don't use a certain marketing strategy mm. on a property up there or a certain mm. marketing strategy over there. When people have their you know, opinions on every mm. suburb, I suppose, mm. if that's kind of what you're alluding to with that. But, you know, Kelmscott, I've lived in Kelmscott most of my life and mm. I've never had mm. an issue mm. in that area. And I don't know if I look, I know I look threatening and all of that. <laughs> <laughs> and I do wear some fairly menacing pocket squares, but it's... Um, it's I room in with yeah. pocket squares. 100%, 100%. But I think down in that area, um, the people that are local mm. don't seem to have the same opinion mm. of the area. Um, no. And obviously the people who are in Clifton Hills, which is our higher side of the, um, uh, the area there up along mm. the, the Darling Range there, it's a beautiful spot. Mm. Um, and the views are outstanding. Um, some really nice homes up mm. there too. Those people, you know, they, in their minds, they would never go and live on the other side yeah. of the railway yeah. line. Yeah. Um, and we find that that area is somewhat aspirational locally mm. for yeah. people who live on the, on the other side of the railway. Yeah. Uh, Tell, um, Question in regards to values, you mentioned before you've been surprised by some of the, the prices coming through. Mm. Have you got some of your, those areas, we've been talking a lot about the negative equity, mm. are they coming back? Have you found a lot of your sellers dealing with that and is it coming back up to meet? Yeah, perhaps surprisingly quickly. Yeah? Surprisingly quickly, yeah. yeah. We've had quite a few people where I've been talking to them for the course of the last three years and they've been really concerned mm -hmm. yeah. know, and looking at it and going, uh, when can we make a move? It's mm. not even necessarily that they want to be out of the area, but they're just they're stuck with an investment yeah. property or whatever it might be. And there's been a lot of conversations, mm. especially over the last four weeks, yeah. where we're ready to go now. Mm. Okay. Yeah. My only concern is that they're all ready to go all at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and suddenly yeah. now we have, you yeah. know, we don't have a, a supply issue. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. the prices aren't where they were. Yeah. 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 What's yeah. hot? What's not? Oh, look. Uh, at the moment, acreage is hot. Yeah. Um, anything with. Do you think that's anything to do with COVID? I was going to ask that. It is that. a big part. Lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah. It is. Yeah. I think. Uh, that people who got stuck on 300 square metres, which around our area is considered, you know, to be a quite a small block, mm, mm. Um, 300 square metres with three kids and a courtyard, and they're going, we've got to make a change. Yeah, yeah. We've yeah. got to make a change. And they might be looking for 800 square metres, and the 800 square metre guy, he's going, I've got to get a couple of acres. So yeah. we're just seeing quite they're a bit closing of... closing in on them. Yeah, exactly. Too many 300 square metre sites. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've got this really nice sort of transitional thing happening within yeah. the area at the moment, which is brilliant. That's so. nice. nice. I, was, I was just saying to the guys uh, and Mark earlier, to have those, we had a couple of sales this week, literally I'd been speaking to that owner for a couple of years to say, look, when it gets to the point you're going to get your money back, we'll go to market. And those two have surpassed that. So mm. one thing I've noticed is if you had your property appraised probably four months ago, you'd probably owe it to yourself to have a chat now because yeah. that data is really the peak COVID. 100%. And it's just changed so quickly. Yeah, it has. Um, so if are you, you wanna... finding buyers are responding to you guys saying, um, because the, the news is talking about mm. like numbers from three months ago. So there's, yeah. it's still fairly, if you look, at, look in the newspapers, it's still fairly negative. Where well, you guys are saying, mm. we're go, go, go. I just don't see where it is. Like this, uh, the pain that they're talking about, um, and we, we get a mixed bag of owners yeah. and properties. 
Um, across the board, it's just tightened up. So 10,300 across the whole of Perth. Last year, 15,500. Mm. Um, average days, what's average days now in Calum Scott? Oh, look, it's, I'm gonna call it as 21 if it's right. Yeah. And as long as it was before, if it's yeah. the wrong price, it's, yeah. it's really, it's so dependent. So I, the average mm. days I couldn't tell you off the top yeah. of my head, but it's, um, it's happening quick if it's priced right. Would you right. say halved oh, from last year? Yeah, comfortably, yeah. yeah. So really we're saying at the moment it's 44. Um, like I use Gosnell's just for example, that was out to 79. That's 44 at the moment. Like, it's changing. So where yeah. the people, and the problem is mums and dads were yeah. watching the news, tell young Billy, Billy, don't go too hard. Now, Billy's been chanting at the bit. He's paying too much rent. He's living with two of his mates. He wants to get out because he's got a new girlfriend. Mm. They're, not, they're emotionally not invested like Billy. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, I, mean, you, I, I, I would say that throughout the course of all of this, the thing that, you know, that throws you every time is that the media's you know, talking about mm. a lot of job loss. And this could just be a WA thing mm. because we are in such a great place at the mm. moment. But I have not had one sale mm. since the start of COVID mm. where someone's gone, I've lost my job, something's I'm happened, I've home. got to go. Yeah. All of it has mm. been we actually just want to make a lifestyle change yeah. or selling an investment property and so on yeah. and so forth. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. Interesting. Very interesting. Mm. Another interesting thing about that area with again, two different sides of the road or different pockets of the area, the old auto valves. Mm. When the buyer comes <laughs> in with a big big hitting because his broker's printed it off or yeah. he's got it from the bank. Um, how out are you seeing some of these? Miles, like <laughs> just just laughably out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's for those that, for you those that don't know. About those. Well, again, how, we'll use this example with. Can we Kelmscott. just quickly tell people what that is? Well, the auto valve is basically a desktop which grabs, in essence, data that well should grab the right data, but doesn't. Three by one, uh, on eight hundred square meters. Mm. Kelmscott, within eight hundred meters. Now, that's four fifty. Potentially yeah. on the other side of the road. Mm. Yep. They don't know the auto valve doesn't know that you've just gone and put marble bench tops in, they put down lighting, you've done other things. Yeah. The computer's so, never done a walkthrough of that house. Yeah. And it's a, you know, some might say it's a stab in the dark, it's a stab mm. in the data. It's just pulling all this information mm. going, mm. Uh, probably. Yeah. But because it's it's coming from an official mm. source, mm. or what people see to be an official yeah. source, being a bank or CoreLogic and so on and so forth, that makes them think, well, this is, this yeah. is legit. It's, yeah, it's yeah. the Bible. Mm. Yeah. And we've had people, I've, well, I've, I know I've personally had guys miss out on two or three in a row because mm. every time he puts an offer in, the guys, well, this is the auto valve. And we're talking 40,000 different. Yeah. Mm. Um, so it, I think it hasn't you're, caught up with, yeah. with what we're experiencing. Yeah. No. And that's purely that as a buyer, you need to, don't just flick swipe on the phone, mm. get out there and go through five or six properties, mm. you know, check them out. Mm. Yes. Because they don't always look as, well, you sometimes see the old TVs that looks more mm. like a, a bench yeah. on the wall because <laughs> of the old yeah. Shire lens. Surely, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. surely if you're serious about buying a home, you're out there looking. Yeah. Yeah, you'd think so. Oh, no. no. Well, because of the FIFO. Hot tip, guys. To a, if you're looking to buy a home, get out there and have a look at the home. Well, that's, 100%. that's, that's yeah, yeah. you very quickly. But I think the, the, di the difference right? is yeah. now the first decision years ago, and I've spoken to this before, years ago, you'd have to get in the car, to drive to the front of the house to go, no, this isn't for us, and you move mm. on. Mm. The first inspections now, while MasterChef's online. on online. So, you're eliminating that first process to go, hey, this actually has potential because yeah. of this, this, and this. You're just eliminating it. Yeah, and I think there's there's also a, um, a fairly large number of people now who are working FIFO. Mm. And with the change in, especially a couple of months ago when things were really kind mm. of at the height of, of the adjustments there, we had um, a lot of people who were away for three, four weeks at a time. Mm. So the information that they were accessing was only online. Yeah. Uh, we yeah. did start to see a few more people making offers sight unseen. They'd send mm. mum through, send the sister yeah. through or whatever. Uh, but now, um, you know, those a lot of those people haven't actually had a chance to get out and see things because by the time they get back, the stuff they're inter interested in is gone. gone. Yeah. 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 All right, guys, I'm going to wrap you there. That was yeah. very, very good conversation. Thank you very much. What, what, do, you, th what do you think? Uh, good. Yeah, <laughs> good. good combo. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Max says it's all good. Max says it's all good. Right, so Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Roscoe, you're up under the hood with Roscoe. Mark, you know we we, we only run this show to be able to get to mm. this point. It's, it's the only reason I tune in. Yeah, Everything's yeah. leading up. This, this, is, this, 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 this is the moment. Okay. So hood highlight, mate. Under the hood. Helm Scott, Clifton Hills. Let's go there. 
Um, so, mate, you're obviously very successful. 14 years in real estate, say? Uh, yes, that's right. 14 yep. years. You started one office, when he was 10. Started, yeah. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> same office the whole time. Yeah, that's really good. That, that, that's, 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 that's a one club I think player. we need to give a little hand to the O'Neill yeah. office because yeah. all of them in there yeah. have been working there since they were 10 to 15 years old. Yeah. Months, and 15 have months. Been there for 15 years. <laughs> but, but what, 15 <laughs> but what, what it actually says, Jess, and, and Mark, this is obviously of interest in your comments because one of the things everybody talks about in a business is culture. Mm. Everybody's trying to get a great mm. culture because culture creates stickability and stickability is what you want for longevity and so yeah. forth. Obviously, they've got it right. They have. And. You know, uh, they're actually. Who's, I don't the know. Owner, who's the owner? There? So Rowan and Berwyn Whisk, two yep. brothers. Okay. Um, they're not O'Neills. No, they're not O'Neills. They purchased it from O'Neill. So okay. O'Neills started it in '57. Wow. And uh, just running out of a house on yep. Abbey Road in Armadale, and so it was John O'Neill who started it. Then it was O'Neills. Uh, it was his son, and now the grandson works at O'Neills uh, for Whisks. So wow. yeah, it's had an interesting sort of ownership structure yeah. over the years. But they are, they're really family focused kind of guys. You know, they are not super industry kind of mm-hmm. uh, living and breathing it. Rowan and Bill are not selling agents themselves. Mm. Um, so they've got a very, very good handle on, mm. on just the, the business side and they give you a lot of autonomy, but they're also there and very supportive as well. We did do um, an episode of The Crunch with Mark, his brother and Con, okay. talking about this. So if you mm. are interested, you can have a listen. If you want some tips on culture. Thank you, thank you. Just so I sort of segue. Wherever yeah. you get your podcasts. Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Jess, this is my segment. I know. Right <laughs> All right, okay. So mate, so Mark, first thing, highlight of your career, mate, after 40 years, what's your biggest highlight? Um, I'll look, probably, the, the biggest highlight would actually probably be being in the industry. I wanted to do this since I was a kid. I was. I was 10 years old. In fact, I was yeah, probably... not falling far from the Not dream. far at all. I would have been Max's age. There's my son over there. Um, I was Max's <laughs> age when I said I wanted to sell real estate um, and just, was yeah, it. was so stoked to get started and, uh, and loved every day of it, really. Hmm. Um, and the other highlight, obviously, being invited onto Perth's premier uh, real estate podcast. Oh. Um, yeah. That's yeah. right up there as well. There you go. And, and you now, talking about this one or are you talking about her one? No, no, the other one. No, no, no. <laughs> and now, now you invite us to the most watched yeah. TV yeah. program yeah. on the planet. Okay, yeah. fantastic, mate. You can leave now. Okay, um, mate, COVID, obviously, one day, mm. one day when, board is, when the curtain comes up and we can get out into the world again. Yes. What's your bucket list go to place? <sighs> Look, it's um, if. Don't if say, you're don't say months ago, Hills. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's some beautiful places up there on Airbnb. Um, no, there's, uh, look, if I'm cold, I want to be warm. If I'm warm, I want to be cold. So right now we're in that middle ground and I don't know if I want to travel at all because it's quite good weather. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, I'm a fairly flighty person who obviously can't fly. Yeah, okay. Yes. Okay. Couldn't, couldn't name a place. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wherever, it's, uh, wherever it's cool in about a month. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm with you, mate. Mm. The 40 degree stuff, <laughs> no one Not my mate. scene. Born and bred in this place, still not made for it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> I lived in New Zealand for 15 years. That took care of the <laughs> Trust me. Um, mate, in your probably little time off, um, mm. Netflix recommendations, what's your go-to? Oh, look, um, can I get preachy? You can do Permission to get preachy. Yeah. So I, I, ha- I hate TV and Netflix. I cut my TV aerial when I was 20. Uh, pulled it out, cut it in half, never went back. Yeah. What? And you don't have a TV? I don't have, I've got a TV like monitor. If I choose to watch Just something plug it in. kind of on a DVD in the old days yeah. or you know, on Apple TV or whatever, I might choose to watch a movie. But What's your favourite movie? Oh, uh, look, yeah, I wouldn't say I've got a favourite movie. I'm, God, real, I'm a real struggle. That's a boring guy, isn't it? I like to watch a lot of this I mean, show. Doing other so stuff. I go back on to the, you know, on to watch other episodes of He's Off Market. Just one. watch lots yeah. and lots of Off yeah, Market. Yeah. Off market. Yeah. I've got so many episodes. So you, no say one, you we work so much. probably get this on Netflix. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, look, I mean, Netflix had a tweet that went out years ago that said, sleep is the enemy, right? And mm. I truly believe mm. that that is their goal, is to just make people zombies. Yeah, well, not that's correct. They're doing a good job. That's going a bit extreme, but they are Their making people some, some pretty crazy. Their number one competitor is these ones, games. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. TV. Yeah. No. So much. there you go. What a dull line. No, uh, no, mate. I'm, I'm with you, brother. <laughs> okay. Um, mate, next big question. Biggest fear. What's something you fear? Oh, my, uh, my greatest fear is, uh, yeah, it's a bit of a new one. It's only come in to sort of strike me. Fairly recently, um, how's, re- how's recent? How recent? Uh, recent? About four weeks ago. Oh, <laughs> oh, <yeah>. So <laughs> the day so raw. So we hit the flesh. To the yeah. day. Yeah. It's it's a major real estate stuff up. So you know what it's like when you're doing an appraisal. You go through. You mm-hmm. kind of know your thing. It's three by one. It's a four by two. Oh wow! Look at the size. Yeah. So you do. You know, because it's the, you're working in a market where most things are fairly the same. You, you would agree. 
Um, and anyway, so I'm going through Properties, this house. yes, people not. People not. <laughs> and that's the thing, because you know, a lot of it is you're trying to work out the people. And so I'm walking in this house and it's a bachelor house and like surfboard in the lounge room, packet of chips next to his bed. Um, I go into the kitchen, there's uh, an SD on the bench because he's FIFO, he's just come back from work. And um, I think I phrased this one. You really, I, think, I think I praised it. Uh, you probably did. <laughs> <laughs> it's more in your neck of the woods. Um, anyway, so I uh, I go uh, into the kitchen and I'm seeing on the fridge because I know his sister. And I'm like, guys, oh, his sister's birthday party invitation, a photo of his nephew and niece and stuff. Anyway, we go back to the um, sister's house because that was where we were talking about what the family is going to be doing in terms of making decisions about where they all live. She only lived just up the road. And we get chatting and I said, so like, it's a bit of a bachelor pad. You kind of need to maybe give it a professional clean. <laughs> Suggest some numbers for professional cleaners. And his sister goes, oh, actually, I should probably get that number too. That's kind of handy because it's my birthday soon. I should treat myself. I said, yeah, you should. Uh, so your birthday's coming up, I believe. And she goes, yeah, yeah. And I said, is it a big one? And she goes, yeah, it is. It is. I said, oh, God, like 50? And she said, yep. Yeah. How did you know? I said, I saw the invitation on um, your brother's fridge. And she goes, what invitation? Oh, it was a surprise party. Yeah. Oh, my. You're kidding. Oh. No. So I... Uh... <laughs> oh, no. Surprise. I didn't, app- I didn't appraise that one. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So... Oh. I thought you were going to say, like, she was turning 30 and you guessed No, I thought that was where you were going. Uh, yeah, I thought that. What do you mean? I wrecked the surprise party. You're pregnant. So. I'm not pregnant. Did, were the uh, rest of the family there? Yeah. Did they all just go... Thorn? No, they said, oh, what, what party? What party? Oh God. So they really yeah, hit it well. Everybody sort of pretended. And everyone just, and everyone just actually happened. Yeah. Everyone just beeped at yeah. the same time. So, it's, so it sounds like I just saw that movie Tenet. It's like that. You're sudden. <laughs> yeah. Back and in time. You know, I haven't seen it yet. And you know how it. you're trying to, yeah, you're trying to, you're trying to backpedal, and you're just trying to change the topic, <laughs> and it was just way too obvious. It was, it was too obvious. <laughs> okay. All right, mate. Busy life, family mm. man, busy world. What's your decompression chamber? How do you decompress? Um, Again, it'll sound as dull as the Netflix thing. The best thing you can do is to just go to bed. (laughs) At the end of the day, when you've had one of those days... What if you can't sleep, though? If you sleep, the next day comes a whole lot quicker. That's true. So you're looking for a new day, you're looking for a new start. Just get the new start to hurry up, go to bed, have a sleep, wake up in the morning, it's a brand new day already. Let's just roll with that. That's the, like, that's the I way like I work. That. I like that. Yeah, I've been mate. doing it all wrong. Yeah, mate, clean living man. Shane Beaumont, you need to take <laughs> some tips off this man. Now, mate, this isn't on script, but we have this is for the benefit of Shane Beaumont. Oh, right. Yeah, sure. he's been the foodie guru as we are. We, we're going to start, mm. you know, we, 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 we call the shots around town. Yeah. Mate, favourite place to eat, favourite dish, where do we go? Whoa. Um, anywhere, doesn't have yeah, to be anywhere. local. Okay, so we're not going to just promote the local. Wherever. Um, you can do both. Millbrook, you can do both. Millbrook Winery down in Jared Yeah. Yep. Absolutely Beautiful. tremendous place to eat. Beautiful position. Yep. Uh, support local businesses. Uh, and Zaffirano. Yeah. In, well, they were on... Moved. Um, yeah, they've moved. Yeah, yeah. They, they were down Where have next they to the to? Old, old Swan Brewery. They're on Outram Street. Street in Westford. Oh, okay. Cool. Mm. Excellent. Yeah. Thank yeah. you, mate. Beautiful. Beautiful. Back to you, Jess. Oh, hey, one more. Oh. Best... Coffee in Kelmscott. Oh, yeah, it'd be at Hidden, yeah. at the Hidden Cafe. Uh, the risk which is saying this, where is it? It is well, Close truly hidden. Side. It's <laughs> it's at the back of an old shop, which uh, they mostly all are in Kelmscott. Uh, but yeah, just at the back of a little old shop, it was a space that someone was running a bike yeah. repair business from. And he goes, I don't like the coffee up the it's road. Your fan coat? Yeah, that's oh, right. No yeah, exactly. So go in there. Okay, I've been in there. Brilliant Oof. coffee. But I had a cup of tea. Oh, well. Sorry. <laughs> well, so this is a wild show today. Yeah, that's right. We're, we're, we're walking on <laughs> the wild have side. A, wow. Have a cup of tea and go to bed. That's the message to the, right, to the agents of Perth. Oh, my God. Yeah. I'm okay. sitting on my mic. What, 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 what is, what's going on in here? We need Ghostbusters in yeah, Crip right. Grady's house. Uh, um, anyway. Sorry okay. about this, guys. Excuse me. My mic yeah. just pipe's just come off. Okay. So, moving on. Yes. Hmm. Now, we normally go straight to play of the week, but this week we've got a special little treat for you. Yeah. Because we did throw to him earlier, Mr. Max sitting in the corner, Mark's son. He's a bit of a real estate guru from what I've heard, eight years of age. And um, he has offered to do a little quiz for us because we want to keep Shane on his toes. Mm, so, Max, come on down. Join us on the show. Keep me on the toes. Go stand, stand on down next week. to your dad. Mate, he's been welcome, keeping me on my toes for okay. eight years. Okay. <laughs> hey, mate. Now, hey. Max is a big real estate fan. Yeah. So he's prepared some questions for you guys. Mm-hmm. Max, do you want to tell them the rules or do you want me to tell them the rules? You can tell the rules. 
Oh, me? Okay, so guys, we're going to do this in the style of quick draw. Yeah. So, Max is going to ask a question. You mm. guys have to buzz in. Right. Shane, it's Gosnells versus Kelmscott. Gosnells. So, both your buzzer is Gosnells. Yep. Mark, yours is Kelmscott. Okay. Can I have Clifton uh, Hills? <laughs> can you what? Can I have Clifton Hills as my buzzer? Yes. Thanks. You can. Can I have Martin? <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. Because when you make it in Gosnells, you move to Martin. So. All right. The Banyola Regional so Park is just between us. Clifton Hills. Um, are you ready, Max? Have you yep. got your questions prepared? Yep. Over to you, mate. Name two parks in Gosnell's Kelmscott area. G Gosnell's. John Dunn Reserve, Robinson Park. I oh, hang on a second. Can I just ask a question here? It's <laughs> one of each. Yeah, is it supposed to be one of each? No, no, it can be two from your area. Oh, right. Oh, sorry. Just, I should get a bonus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. Can I also just give a disclaimer because um, I have forgotten to put the answers on the sheets. <laughs> so we, get a, so, uh, so which, we have to determine whether or not we've got the correct answer. Which should be an issue right. until the final question. Well, I got that one. You got that one. One to Shane. Okay. And if you want another park, Chelsea Reserve. Okay, don't show off. Fry Park <laughs> is a tremendously... Uh, I played at John. I actually played for Kelmscott. Oh, did you really? Yeah, yeah. yeah the name's on the board there. Oh, well, okay. I did All play right. for Bulldogs. Yeah. Okay. Max, it's back to you. Okay. Name three schools in Gosnells or Kelmscott. Oh. I think I got it. I think Who do you Shane think got it, got it Max? St. Munchens. Great school. Can I... In one suburb? Yeah. Yes. We're a bearer and Lumen Christi. Is that Gosnells there, mate? Martin, I said I was Martin. Is it the city of Gosnells or? Okay, all right, no, that's fine. <laughs> fine. I went there. Yep. All right, Max. Hence why I'm a real estate agent. <laughs> Name two restaurants in Gosnells or Kelmscott. Oh. That was definitely Kelmscott. This would be good. What have you got? <laughs> <laughs> Hoggies. Yeah, Hoggies are going to Hoggies. Happen. All right, all right. Uh, can they, they can both be in Kelmscott, can't they? Subway yes. is not. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Subway doesn't count. Okay, so I'm going to have to go to Gosnells for the next restaurant. Um, <laughs> that's tougher. <laughs> no, that's Macca's. It's not counting either. Uh, yeah, so Gosnells. We're, out. Yeah, we're out. Oh, you've only got no, one. No, no, we've only got one in Tomsko. <laughs> uh, but we've, we've got some tremendous cafes. And you've got the Gosnells Hotel as well. You get a lovely meal there, right? You Do we? One. Okay, you can have one point for that. <laughs> All right, Max. There's got to be something else. Porky's is on the border. Porky's is right on the border. What was the top selling <laughs> suburb of the river in WA last week? Sorry? South of the river. Top selling uh, south of the river. Beldivis, Beaumont. You didn't um, <laughs> buzz me. Kelmscott. Kelmscott. I'm coming Kelsey. for you, Elsie. I'm, I'm coming for you, Elsie. <laughs> Kelmscott, I'm going to throw it to you. Kelmscott. Maybe Beldivis. Beldivis, I'd, I'd say. Yeah, pretty, yeah. <laughs> yeah awesome. one to oh. Kelmscott. Yeah. All right, we're coming. This, Max, really this is a tiebreaker now. Is this, this is our last question, isn't it? Yes. It's a tiebreaker, so don't forget to buzz in correctly. Did they turn the air con on? All right, this is it. You ready, mate? Okay. What is the difference between the total number of properties on the market this time last year versus this Beaumont. year? Gosnells. <laughs> Kelmscott. <laughs> Shane. Shane did say Gosnells. <laughs> so the total will... difference would be in the vicinity of 5,000. I'm going to have to give it to him because I do not have the answer. <laughs> it's actually about 4,000. It's actually about 4,000. And you would know that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't have the answers. He didn't have the questions. Yeah. <laughs> that was so good, Max. Well done, Max. Well done, Max. So if you're looking to get ahead in this economic times, restaurants in the Kelmscott, Gosnells region. They're calling for it. Mm. They're calling for it. There you mm -hmm. go. Yeah. Um, Oh, it's not in the right. There's actually a stack in Kelmscott, and I probably should have mentioned that. There's the Brookton Burgers, which are tremendous. That's in Kelmscott. Uh, we've also uh, got Kim Valley Chinese Restaurant. Uh, the Porris. The place to Very be. good bakery. At the shop. That's his well, one. I mean, anything awards. at Buster's Restaurant. No, but I'm saying you've got good pies there. Yeah, tremendous pies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. And uh, they're award-winning pies. Um, <laughs> they and, actually are. Uh, they are award-winning pies. <laughs> Every uh, local right. rag, front page. <laughs> well, Mark's just... Mike's just brought himself back from the brink of being <laughs> yeah, yeah, ejected yeah. from Kelmscott yeah. as the number yeah, one yeah, agent. Yeah, yeah. Good save, mate. Max, that was an excellent segment, one of my favourite. Well well, thank you so much, mate. Thanks, Max. Thanks, Max. Um, do you want to hang around down there while we quickly do Play of the Week? Because it's a very fast segment. Dang, you yeah, can just hang, hang out. Yeah. So, Play of the Week, guys. Has anyone got a nomination? This is why it's very fast, because no one has a nomination. Not this week. Well, I did hear about an appraisal in Kelmscott that went wrong. <laughs> yeah. the, the, I, I heard about that one. <laughs> no, um, I've got a player of the week that I'd like to nominate, yeah. um, and this is to our very own Shane Beaumont, oh, God. who um, 
oh. is going to be a dad. Oh, oh yeah. Yes. Yes. Congratulations. Yes. Yes. Congratulations. Congratulations to you and Sam. Very looking forward to having an off-sider. Hey. Yeah. Much like this setup. Yeah. That's it. So in they are a few awesome. years' time, we can have a Max <laughs> versus Little Beaumont quiz. We could. Yeah. There you okay. go. Brilliant. Um, that is it. If anyone else has anything to add. No. Uh, well, done. well done to the award winners. Yeah, yeah. well done yeah. to the award winners. Well, well deserved. <laughs> Tough thanks, year. Crib, for having us here. Very um, yeah. Thank you to Lindsay O'Sullivan from Keystar, yeah. of course, Mark, and your wonderful son, Max, for coming out here. Well done. Um, thanks to the Crib crew who put up with us mm. for a lot longer than I promised them that they would have to. Um, any results or anything that you want to share with the show, please send them through, and we will see you back here for episode 16 in two weeks' time. Thank you very much. Bye. Well done. Woo! Bye. I'll be the same.